Okay, let's look at uh, list boxes. First off, we'll start with this one down here. I put some items in this. I right clicked and then I chose edit items and then I put these items in here. Now I'm going to um, program this button such where I click it, it'll take whichever one's highlighted and put it in this text box. Okay. So text box one dot text equals list box three dot now how you reference the items in the list box is with the items and then I'll put a bracket and list box three dot selected index to string <coughs> Okay, let's talk about what this does. Selected index, that returns uh, uh, the whichever one's selected. David is the first choice, that's zero in terms of indexing. Frank is the second choice, that's one in terms of indexing. Then two and then three. So it goes from zero, zero to three. It does not go from one to four as you might think. Okay, and then this uh, items returns the items at that that uh, position, and then to string converts it to a string, and then you can assign it to text box. Now, if I click uh, Sally there and click the button, you see it puts Sally over here. Now, let's say I run it again, assuming uh, I should shut off the vast briefly okay disable for one hour <coughs> there we go now I should be able to run it okay so let's say I run this I don't have anything selected and I click button see we get an exception uh, because nothing selected if I put my mouse over selected index you see it uh, tells us it's negative one I'm going to click stop there. Typically, what goes along with a selection like this is you check. You got an if statement. And you say if list box 3 dot uh, selected index is greater than negative 1, <coughs> that's when you'll actually do this code. So if I don't have anything selected, if I click this, now it doesn't uh, blow up anymore. It simply doesn't do anything. It waits until you click something before it puts it over here. Okay, now let's see if I can remember how to add entries to this and delete them. So this is just our um, retrieve, maybe? <coughs> let's say I have another list box. Oops. Try that again. Text box. This will be text box two. And uh, I'm going to have an add button. And let me uh, give that a the name add. Well, not the name, but the text. Okay. So when they uh, click this button here, I want it to add to this list. This is text box two. So let me double click that. Um, let me think how this works. List box. I have to relearn it myself each semester. Dot items. Dot add. Yeah. And then text box two. Dot text. <coughs> now if I run it, if I put in something here, Henry, and click add, and then it'll add Henry to that. It'll keep adding Henry's if I keep clicking that. And again, if I click one of these, and click Retrieve, it should work that way. Now let's um, put a delete in there to delete an item off here. And I'm trying to include all the different items um, that you might run across in projects. Okay. Probably don't need that, but uh, let me get rid of it. Okay, this is going to be a remove. <coughs> and 
this will be my ad. Now, of course, to remove one, it has to be selected. So let me double click this remove. And we want to say if list box 3 dot selected index is greater than negative 1. That means something that is actually selected. Now, this, this part I don't think I really remember very well. Uh, list box 1 dot items dot remove. Remove. Okay. That's value. Let's remove that. That's the index. Okay, that's one to one. List box three dot selected index. <clears throat> and let's see if I got the right uh, code there. Okay, so I got one of these hi highlighted. I click remove and it gets rid of it. If I don't have anything highlighted and I cl uh, click it, click it, then it doesn't uh, error out because I put that if statement in there. Okay, so that's how you retrieve items uh, from a list box. That's how you add items. That's how you remove items. Now let's uh, show um, I don't know finding the average of numbers. So let me make this a little bit bigger. And I'll, um. Up on my list box. <coughs> hmm. Is that? Oh, that's it. Okay, and then right click on this and say edit items and put some numbers in here. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. <coughs> and um, need a button. There we go. I'll put the result in a text box, or you could do a label if you wanted. Okay, so I'm going to have it go through, add this, and then divide by your count. Um, and again, I'm just showing straight code here. There are shortcuts for some of these. So sum is equal. Oops, that's interesting. Okay, let's try it again. Uh, double sum is equal to zero. And I want to loop through the, the the code. So for x equals for int x equals zero. Uh, continue while x is less than um, list box four dot items dot is it count? Yeah, count. Okay, x plus plus. <coughs> Since our first entry is zero in terms of index, then it'll continue while it's less than count. Count is actually how many is in there. So if we have seven numbers in there, then count is seven. So this will go from zero to x is less than seven, so it'll go from zero to six. Okay. Sum is equal to sum plus, uh, let's see, list box four dot items and uh, x dot to string and I need to convert that um, convert well, convert to okay I remember the syntax. So convert to um, to double. Okay. Now, when once it's done with the for loop, now that's the only line of code I need in the for loop. Then I can write out my result to uh, my text box. Text box three is our new one. Text equals sum dot two string. Uh, let's see three, six, ten, fifteen, twenty one, twenty eight. Twenty eight. Okay. So now that's our sum. Um, 
but we're going to have sum divided by, since we're figuring the average, uh, the, the count of how many is in the list box. So list box 4.items.count. Count, count yeah. <clears throat> 28 divided by 7 should give us 4. Yep, give us 4. Okay, so that um, shows you how to loop through a list box. Shows you how to access individual entries. Now, let's say I want to transfer these numbers over to this box. And I don't remember that project exactly. Um, I don't have the book with me handy. Uh, well, I went ahead and did this earlier just so I could remember how to do it. <laughs> so, let me talk about the code. Um, oh, yeah, that's right. I wanted to just take the number and multiply by 2. So every number in that first list box I want to multiply by 2 and put in the second one. So I loop through the first uh, list box using this code here. Um, I want to convert it to integer. List box one dot items and then two string. Again, this items here refers to the individual items in the list box and that converts it to a string. The X refers to which one? If you got seven numbers, the first number has index of zero, then index of one, and index of two, and so on. And then uh, down here, list box one dot items dot add. Um, that adds a new number I created where I multiply by two. Let me show that. And then you see you get this right here. <coughs> <coughs> now you can. Let me show one more because I just thought of something else. If you have list boxes to uh, do uh, choices, <coughs> so list box five, and um, did I just click that? Oh, there, list box six, and um, I'm going to edit items here, and um, these are tickets, let's say. So. Um, Say there's low, low amount, uh, middle amount, um, low, middle, high. <coughs> and here, I'm gonna right click on this and choose edit items. And this will be uh, what will this be? Um, excitement factor, uh, or let's see, boring, um, and exciting. Okay, so planning a, a vacation, and uh, this is how much I'm going to spend, and this is whether it's an exciting vacation, like I'm skiing, or a boring one where maybe I'm visiting a math museum, uh, something like that. This button here is going to choose, um, uh, or see which one's selected, and then, then uh, figure the amount based upon that. And let me uh, show the... So the idea here, okay, low is going to be fifty dollars, middle will be two hundred, high will be a thousand. <coughs> and down here, boring will be um, seventy dollars, exciting will be um, three thousand. Okay, so now I'm going to double click this. And uh, what is this? List box five. Okay, let me do that one first. Okay, so total amount. Total amount equals zero. And uh, for list box five, I need to retrieve the um, actual value, I think. String. That should be an uppercase S. Uh, let's try this. S. S is equal to uh, list box five dot items. Dot list box. Five dot selected index. 
to string. Okay, so now I want to check if s is equal, I'm trying to think if it's that or the eq, is equal to low $50. Then um, total amount is going to equal to total amount plus 50. <coughs> <coughs> now down here at the end, I'm going to drop in my new text box, which was, what was it? Text box 4 dot text equals S dot two string. No, wait. Total amount dot two string. Let's just check to see if that code works. Okay, if I choose low, click the button here, put $50 in there. Okay, that works. Um, else, miss, mixing the languages up here. Else if S is equal to middle $200. Then total amount equals total amount plus 200. <coughs> Else, if S is equal to high, is it, is it high? Yeah, high, $1,000. 1000 Then total amount equals to total amount plus 1,000. Now let me, um, let me retrieve S again, but this time from list box 6. Dot items, list box 6 dot selected index, dot to string. <coughs> Now if S is equal to, whatever I said those were, boring $70, boring $70, that has to match that string exactly, then total amount is equal to total amount plus 70. Now I won't continue this, I think you see the pattern. But this is how you check two different text, uh, two different list boxes. So if I run this, and I choose middle and boring, then that should be 270, which it is. Well, that should give you an idea of um, the basics of uh, list boxes. <coughs> <coughs> I remember how to stop my recording. <coughs>